If people try to have a conversation with me and they use some sort of reference to something you normally learn in elementary school and high school, I'll smile and pretend as if I know what they're talking about, but I didn't. Hasidic Jews, the most strict of the Orthodox, learn from the time they're very young that beyond their insular communities lies a depraved world fraught with evil and destructive temptations, bereft of noble values and hungry for immediate gratification. They shun the everyday staples of the outside world, and that includes the basics of education. Their education takes place almost entirely in Yiddish, producing generation after generation of Hasids who can barely speak English and know next to nothing about U.S. history or cultures, reinforcing the invisible wall that separates them from other Americans. Would we want these people to be more educated in the secular world? Sure. And what would they get? A Harvey Weinstein? What would they get? A Donald Trump? Did he or didn't he? Did she or didn't she? A lot of people don't know this, but right now, there are tens of thousands of children attending Hasidic yeshivas in Brooklyn and other parts of New York that are not getting a proper secular education, almost getting no secular education at all. My name is Naftali Moster, and I'm the founder and executive director of Yafet. Yafet is a nonprofit organization that's working to improve the secular education in ultra Orthodox and Hasidic communities. Typically speaking, under the age 13, boys receive only 90 minutes of secular studies and only four days a week. And the secular studies consist of just English and math, no other subjects. Like Naftuli, Haim Fishman, who grew up in a Hasidic home, had to struggle to overcome a yeshiva education that left him ill-equipped to grasp basic math and American cultural reference points. He's now a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania, where he still gets stuck when he hears for the first time about such things as the Beatles and the Cold War. So we had an hour and a half of uh, what we called English, which included the English and arithmetic, no science, no history, no other social studies. All the conversation in class and with the teacher was always only in Yiddish. When they reach 13, they get zero secular studies. And it's not because they don't attend school long enough. They actually attend yeshiva for about 12 to 14 hours a day. Hit the test we called, which was the last year of middle school. We, instead of finishing school at 5.50, we finished school at 6.20. But then an hour and a half of secular studies was taken away. Basically started school from 7.45 until 6.20 but only religious studies, like no secular studies at all. Haim pushed to fill in the gaping holes in his education, leaving the Hasidic high school he attended after one semester to go to a modern Orthodox school where half the day focused on non-religious subjects. Still, Haim felt he was woefully behind where students typically were at his age. He transferred to a public high school that had a program designed for gifted students and graduated in June of 2017. Graduates from those yeshiva come out completely unprepared for the workforce, not able to communicate effectively in the English language, let alone having any other knowledge and other subjects. The girls in the Hasidic community do get a better education. Girls in the Hasidic community can't become rabbis. Even if they excel at Jewish studies, they can't. There's no such thing. When the husband does grow up to become a rabbi and he continues studying Jewish studies and is not able to go out there and support himself, at least the wife can go out there and earn some sort of living for the community. So they really get the burden of both to provide for the family and to have kids and to raise kids. They're not seeing what we are seeing. If we'll go to their schools from town to town, from county to county, 10% are in drugs, 5% are in the system already as criminals, and we don't know what the rest are. We tried to have an after-school program in the community center. So we put 10 Jewish children in there to do after-school work with 10 Gentile children. It didn't last 30 minutes, and I said, thanks, students. Everybody gets a price on the way out. We'll keep your parents posted. And I was looking at the deputy commissioner. I said, did you see what I saw? Did you hear what I hear? To a point, but what's your point? I said, my point is as follows. The Jewish kid never heard the word F.U. But the next table with the Latino child was 
said five times, I can't do this shit. Kid never heard it. This program is over. That was Isaac Abraham, a spokesman for Hasidic Jews in Brooklyn. Abraham says the Hasidic community has nothing to envy or emulate in the larger society. He explains that the Hasidic education system is the least of his worries. Some of the best attorneys were Jewish and still are. Some of the best lawyers are Jewish. Who, uh, who did Harvey Weinstein hire? Ben Brafman. Michael Jackson hired the Jewish lawyer. But, but, but they're worried about our, our education means nothing. Naftuli is determined to keep fighting the self-imposed limitations of yeshiva education and the blind eye that he sees government officials turn to the deficient academics in those schools. He says yeshivas are suppressing the potential of generation after generation of Hasidic Jews and believes that he has found the answer to the problem. There are laws in place. Now public schools must provide an education that is substantially equivalent to public school. The law goes on to say clearly that they must teach English, math, science, social studies, and other subjects. How is it possible that the law is so clear, the guidelines are so clear, and it's common knowledge that it's not happening, yet no one is doing anything about it? Well, I'm seeking the solution, which should be the obvious one, which is if there are laws in the book, they should be enforced. Imagine if the Hasidic community said, we have a different way of life, we believe in God, we, we don't need to buckle our children, or we don't need to put them in, you know, car seats and stuff like that. No, no, there are laws. It's perfectly fine to enforce those laws. The same is true with education. This is educational neglect. So all we're asking really is enforce this law just like you would enforce any other law, plain and simple. So we want yeshivas to remain fully Hasidic, continue teaching the Judaic studies and the Hasidic studies, but you have to dedicate more time and teach more subjects and teach them all through high school as required by New York State law.